So as far as we can tell, when you hang out with really smart people who know how to do calculus and stuff, Dr. Ed Ashby being the forefront and the tip of the spear on that, kinetic energy really isn't a great measurement for aero penetration effectiveness. Because kinetic energy is such a common language in the archery, uh, we did a little test. So we shot arrows through a lab radar. If you haven't seen my video on arrows erosion over 60 yards, you need to see that. Some are going fast and some aren't going as fast, so. Okay, so what we did was, just like the other video on arrow velocity zero to 60 yards, we shot, it's the same subset of information. So if you haven't seen that video, it's in the playlist on my channel, and then I'll have in the description below, there's a link to that. So that'll link back and connect the dots between, we did a, te a speed test to show the erosion over distance for different arrow masses from three different bows. And then it's pretty easy to calculate the kinetic energy. A lab radar unit is a box about this big. Here's a picture of the screen. And it has a cone of radar out in front of it. And you just shoot the arrows through the cone. You can't see it. But when you shoot it, you see these data points that come up. And it'll show the arrow's velocity. And then it'll automatically calculate the kinetic energy for you. And it comes back in the data. And here's a screenshot of the data. It's not a small subset. So if you're going to undertake this... Get a lab radar. So what I wanted to understand was when we really extend the range with archery gear, especially for you Western guys, especially at 60 yards, and I think you're going to be surprised by the kinetic energy results. So hang on, let me explain a few things. So I need you to watch the magic arrow. I'm going to explain the graph you're seeing. And I'm going to kind of tear it apart and kind of simplify it some. Because if I just threw it up there, I think some people would be baffled a little bit. So the first thing you're going to see is this arrow. That I put it on all, of the, on all of the graphs just to get you oriented to what's going on in the graph. So in the first graph, we have the bow type listed at the top. I did not list the brands. We shot a dual cam bow. We shot a, a pretty fast. I think the peak speed on that bow with a 388 grain arrow was... 294 and I'm 28 inches, 28 and a half, and that was a 65 pounder. So it's a really nice velocity for an average sized person with a you know normal draw weight for deer hunting and elk hunting. The next part of the graph is the Y axis is the kinetic energy. Pretty standard up and down. I've got it from 50 to 85 pounds because it didn't need to go below 50 because there wasn't anything that low. And then there wasn't anything at 85 because we weren't shooting a 95 pound bow or a 350 grain, uh, 350 foot per second arrow, which does help the kinetic energy because the math, but the erosion would be awful. More to come on that. The next one is the arrow mass at the bottom, the X axis. So it's in 50 grain increments, but the arrows themselves were broken apart in different weights. And I'm going to explain that in a second. The two lines you see, you see the launch kinetic energy at the top, and at the bottom, you see the kinetic energy at 60 yards. So those two lines show you what happened with each individual arrow. So on top is the launch velocity, or the launch kinetic energy, and the bottom is the 60 yard kinetic energy. And then as it goes across, each, that's each dot is the next heavier arrow. Obviously between the two, is the erosion over distance. So whatever the top number is, whatever the bottom number is, at 60 yards, that's the erosion. That's how much kinetic energy is lost traveling that distance. One thing nobody does and nobody talks about is tuning arrows. So most people who do these kind of tests, they just strap on your 400 grain field point on a 300 spine arrow running 70 pounds and the thing's swimming all over the place. So what that gives you is, that gives you data for an arrow flying sideways. So it's accurate data for an arrow flying sideways, but if you don't bear shaft, knock, tune your arrow set, and raise the spine so they will fly, your, your uh, data points are not going to be accurate. You're gonna shoot a light arrow, whatever. You still gotta fly straight, so it can't come off doing this, or when you're shooting through a lab radar, because it's just a dumb machine, just, it just records. You're gonna get this, you're gonna get a couple arrows that are right, and then if, if you just keep loading the front and don't change the spine and bear shaft everyone for the 
for the weights as you walk up, you're going to get crazy uh, results because the arrow is going to be swimming all over the place. The, the arrows we shot were Sirius Apollos. They're 204 diameter, so they're mids. And they're not, you know, big diameter. They're not micros. They're right down the middle. Lots of people shooting this diameter. I don't think the diameter matters as much on this test. It's a flight test, so it didn't matter. The arrow tune matters a lot. We shot the Zinger 4 fletches on here. They're really easy to replace. And we were bouncing them off the ground and missing the targets because we were just... Whole, we just put the sights on whatever and just held over. You're just doing a flight test. So as long as it's flying through the cone, you don't have to hit the target. And then the spines, I walked them up. So I started at 350, I went to a 300, and as I increased point mass and as I was bare shaft tuning, I walked the spines up. So you'll see a little bit of fluctuation in some of the masses. You won't see exactly 25 or 50 grain changes because the, the mass of the shafts themselves is different. And then finally, the actual arrow masses were 388, 436, 514, 589, 616, 670, and 718. I explained this in the arrow velocity video, zero to 60, watching the speed erosion, that I tried to stay in a decent subset of arrows that anyone could really realistically build. Over 750 takes some tinkering. If you're going to go Cape Buffalo or elephant hunting, call us. TroyRanchFair.com. I can consult you with you on that. And really, really light arrows are finicky as heck. So we started at 388 and walked them up. One thing to be uh, be straight about this: the 388 grain arrow. I don't own anything that light. Uh, was a friend of mine's, and that's the only arrow that was not tuned to his tuned to his bow. But we shot it through our bows anyway. So there could be some wiggle room in the lightest arrow. It wasn't flying sideways and it sure didn't take off to the right. Once again, we're doing a flight test. So, you know, everything else was bare shaft tuning. And as we went up in, in, uh, in weight, they were. So that's if there's, a, if there's an error, possible error in the, um, in the data, it, it would be that. Now that error was 300 spine. So I don't have any doubt that it was flying okay. Okay, right? It wasn't 400 spine and way under spine to make it super light. So as we go forward, we're gonna step up and you're, like I said, the, the, the types of bows are not listed. Excuse me. The brands of the bows are not listed. I don't want this to turn in the comment section to some you know, bow war. So the first graph is the really fast bow. It's got a six inch brace size, it's the fastest bow we had. Very aggressive dual cam bow. When you draw it back and if you twitch forward, it wants to take off. I mean, it's like a greyhound coming out to shoot. That son of a gun jumps. And you can see here that the, uh, it ran about se almost 75 foot-pounds at launch with 388 grains. And then it was, oh, 57, 58 at 60 yards. One thing you need to see in this graph, though, is as the arrow mass went up, the graph narrows and the kinetic energy at 60 is actually improving. And that delta, the difference between the two, is becoming smaller. So that means at distance, the impact kinetic energy is better. If you believe kinetic energy is your math, if you believe in kinetic energy, then every graph here shows that the higher mass projectiles at long range were helping. Second bow we shot, or I'm graphed here, is the single cam. Once again, you see uh, kinetic energy in the high 60s, and then in the mid 50s, low 50s at 60 yards with a very light arrow. This arrow, this bow was tuned to that 388 grain arrow. But once again, you see the kinetic energy in both graphs. It doesn't go up as dramatically at launch, but at 60 yards, as the mass goes up, it improves. The delta, the difference between the two lines is improving and compressing. So that means it's better at 60 yards. It's just math. And then finally, the dual cam bow, which is my bow, and we see the same results. We see about 70 foot-pounds with the light arrow, and uh, well, 56 or so at 60 yards with a very light 388 grain arrow. Once again, the kinetic energy at distance is improving as the data set goes across. I dropped in a red line, um, which is just me exploring things, on the highest 60-yard kinetic energy, which was the heaviest arrow, and I drew it across to kind of comp the difference between the, 
the lightest and the, and the heaviest arrow. So that's the speed bow there. That's the single cam. I'm a little bit under on the heavy arrow, but eh, we're fine. And right across the top on the dual cam bow. And you can see how much difference there is there. It's so all three bows, as the uh, arrow mass went up, the kinetic energy at 60 yards went up. So I'm just gonna let that sit there. Um, more to come on this, right? This is what we'll do in the Ashby Foundation. That um, When you start applying broadhead platforms to this, that's gonna be the interesting part. So in the original study, which we're gonna repeat most of that with a compound, it was all done at 20 yards. We're discussing when this will occur, I don't know. That's why you donate to the Ashby Foundation to help us out so we can figure this stuff out. I would love to repeat the tests at 60, dial it in, you know, get the sights right for every arrow weight, get the bow tuned, get the arrows tuned, and run different broadhead platforms out to 60 and find out what happens. We don't know. We don't know. All we know is the math here shows that as arrow mass increases over 60 yards distance, the kinetic energy is retained. Hey, if you haven't seen the video on speed erosion, I did a, basically the same thing. Like I said, it's in the description below the links on there. Click on that, and I did the speeds for each arrow mass, and I showed the erosion over distance. It's very similar to this. Everything kind of improved. It's in a different way, but watch that video just so you get your head wrapped around that. I didn't want to put all this stuff in one big video because you're, I mean, <laughs> when I talked to Rocketman Daryl Barnett, if I ran this speed to KE and then momentum, which I'm going to do another video on that, I already have the momentum graph, your head would pop off. So go back to the speed video, watch that, understand what I'm communicating there about the velocity erosion over distance, and then come back and kind of ponder the kinetic energy. This hasn't been tested on animals yet. It, well, it has. <laughs> 20 plus years. But everybody's saying it's not been done with a compound. So that's what we're going to do. And this will be a really cool test to launch um, different broadhead platforms, which is where the efficiency will come up, right? I'm going to do speed, I'm going to do kinetic energy, and the momentum is just math. And then I'm not going to... Um, publish any of this data that we're going to do for the Ashby Foundation. That'll go on the Ashby Bowhunting YouTube channel when we apply broadhead platforms and do more formal testing on animals. That's an Ashby Foundation type of thing, and that'll appear there. So it, that'll be really cool. It'll be super fun to find out what happens and start to explore how we increase aero lethality and recovery rates. Because if you Western guys are going to be launching bombing out there at 60 to 80 yards and we know you're going to do it and you're going to shoot a whitetail arrow at a 700 pound elk that's walking across chasing a cow and the range is changing and all that stuff it's got to penetrate so when we get the testing going we'll find out what penetrates and it'll be awesome and then we'll tell you what that is so that's all. That's my discussion on kinetic energy out to 60 yards. Hey, subscribe to the channel. Hit that dinger bell so you get notifications when cool science and math things come up. I've learned more about Poncelet equation and calculus and uh, aerodynamic drag. Whew, that's annoying. Drag is good. Drag is really bad, except for brakes. That's what Barnett says. Drag is really bad, except for brakes. With brakes, drag is good.